Okay, here we go. Pump seems to be back on again. Uh, I'm looking forward to your run. Good luck. Thank you, Conway. Do you use cornmeal ever? Cornmeal? No, Dale. I do not use cornmeal. Uh, the reason being it is too fine and you struggle to filter it out. If you're going to use it in like a UJSSM or like that Millipop Moonshine video I did, yes, then you can use cornmeal because it will settle out to the bottom. Just make sure you mix it up nicely so uh, you don't have any dry clump or anything like that that can end up in your boiler and then end up scorching. Welcome, Gerre, uh, Greg. How long do you boil the mash? I boil it for 30 minutes. So 30 minutes should be enough on a rolling boil to convert any of the fermentable sugars. Um, so yeah, about 30 minutes on a rolling boil. So that does not include heat up. The moment I see bubbles on the top, um, the rolling boil starting, then I Time it for 30 minutes, allowing it to convert as many of the sugars or destroy some of the sugars that it can ferment quicker. By boiling it, the molasses run ferments out in about five days. Uh, if I don't boil it, all the previous run rum runs I've done takes up 14 days for the molasses to ferment out. Cool. Uh, okay. Dale, any other questions from your side? Please pop them down. Honest as well. Justin, welcome. Uh, if you have any questions, please pop them in the comments so we can have a like a key and a session. I'm gonna go check the column. Make sure we have heat traveling up the column. Okay, as soon as we have heat hitting the bottom of the side glass, I will move you guys closer to the still uh, so I can show you the whole process of uh, compressing those heads and tails. I did a run this morning, actually two runs, and we have uh, these two jars here. Both are four shots and heads. One came off at 90 and the other one came off at 89%. This is for a video coming up soon where we are going to be testing the different flavors we get from wild yeast versus distillers. So, yeah. Hello, Sean. Um, advice for a beginner. Keep it simple. Don't get too complicated. Um, a lot of guys tend to overcomplicate the hobby and want to go too in-depth into water chemistry and nutrient and uh, the type of still that they're running. Um, so yeah, keep it simple. Start with a basic setup. Uh, most guys start off with either a fruit or a sugar wash and uh, start from there. Sugar wash will teach you a lot of neat techniques like inverting your sugars as well as um, getting the right nutrient levels into the water, whether you use a, a marmite or a dead yeast hulls or uh, tomato paste PPW if you're doing a bird watchers recipe. Uh, Josh, what am I running today? Today I am running generation four of the Millipup Moonshine. I did two runs this morning. Got up nice and early, completed two runs. One is a distiller's yeast, and the other one was a uh, wild yeast that I captured from using grapes. Yeah, that's the two runs I made. Uh, video will be up next week, Tuesday. Uh, have I ever used backset in your rum washes? Greg, no. Um, I have yet to use backset in my rum washes. The reason being is with my rum washes, I like the clean uh, and nice flavors. 
up until I started doing this banana rum and then I fell in love with those funky flavors. So I am currently busy using the back set from the banana rum to make a second generation rum of that banana. Um, and the smells coming off of that is great. So uh, yeah, that video will also be up soon where we do a second generation on that rum run. Mm, Sean, hi Beaver, what advice? Okay, we've answered that one. How many degrees is sweet spot for your still? Justin, that is a very good question. I do not run my still on degrees. I did it at the beginning of the channel because I, I assume that's what people wanted. When I started distilling many years ago, um, there wasn't temperature guides and all the other stuff. It was pretty much just, yeah, setting up a still, old copper still, and then running it. So, um, temperature-wise, I run my still uncapped, so with nothing, the column, nothing attached to it, up until I can't touch the water or the wash inside of the boiler anymore. Then I place my cap on top. Then I allow it to get up to temperature to up just below the sight glass. Once it gets to the sight glass, I start doing the compression so, uh, of the heads and tails. But yeah, um, if I have to take a temperature reading, I will stop stilling at about 92 degrees if I need to do a temperature controlled run. I do not use a PID, I just use a standard speed controller of a 2400 watt polisher. Um, so yeah, that's what I use to control the power going in. Um, uh, thanks a lot. Uh, compressing the heads and the tails. Okay, um, Neil, welcome. Uh, compressing heads and tails. So what I mean about compressing is if you've ever watched one of Jesse or George's videos when they talk about the Genio still, they use the Genio or the Genio programming is set up so it uses reflux so the transition between your um, each of your run or each of your cuts, and I'm talking about cuts, not the jars, but your four shots, heads and tails, um, is a linear decrease in the flavors depending on if you're using acid, uh, the acetone flavors or whatever that um so i use my reflux so i balance my column between cuts to make sure that the transition is a straight cut transition and not a smooth swooping line with a gradual decrease in flavor so i get from jar one i start taking off hot and um, once I hit tails, as I did here, on this run, you will see I hit tails here, smelt tails at about 54% on this jar. What I did then is I flipped the still back into full reflux for 15 minutes. Then I compressed my tails, getting off 76. And the flavors that I got off of this, so in jar number four on this run, you start getting that... Um, almost like a sweet but um want to say moldy but when you walk into an old room that musty smell um and then in jar number five which should be now deep into the tails by compressing that back in using the reflux and taking um the the, the tails off nice and slow this has turned back into a very sweet, there's no musty smell, and you can also see it's crystal clear with no sediment at the bottom of it, um, meaning that we didn't pull any oils. I do keep an eye on when I take off my tails while using that compression technique, so I do not um, see any oil dripping into the jar. The moment I see those little swirls of oil dripping into the bottom of the jar or into the the, the cut jar, I change out the jar and collect a little bit left over to see if there's any other flavor still left over. But normally when that happens, the flavor too does tend to go bad real quick. So yeah, that's how I, I use reflux to compress my heads, hearts and tails. So 15 minutes, once I start getting first drips, 15 minutes of full reflux. Uh, with nothing coming off the spout, and then I dial back on the reflux up until I get to my takeoff speed, 
and during my hard run i turn off reflux completely and just do the hard run up until i smell um tails coming in full reflux again allow me to compress my tails and yeah give you uh, a nice large jar that you can use of just tails Hello, you go, gonna be you. Yeah, yes. Uh, yeah, you go. Thank you for the, thank you for the idea for a live stream. So yeah, uh, you go was one of the guys that suggested we do a live stream. So uh, yeah, welcome. Um, quickly going to check the column. We're about third of the way up the column at the moment. Um, once the column gets to the site last, we'll start. Any other questions, please shoot them now. Before we get into that whole compression side of things. Um, and please just let me know if the sound and the video quality is okay. First time doing this, so I'm not 100% sure if I'm doing it correctly. Well, I've got everybody here. Would anybody like to see a couple of tastes on some of the stuff we've done over the last little bit, like the first generation of the banana rum, or the fig, or the condensed milk, or the bomb versus barn, or a quick check back on does ABV actually matter when you're aging? Those jars have been on wood now for a good seven months. So if anybody wants to see those, Taste tests, please pop it down in the comments. Okay, cool. Thanks, Dale. Thanks for letting me know. So, uh, yeah. Luckily, the video and the audio is good. Body up there. There we go. Okay, thanks for the live stream. Can you maybe explain how the site loss works because I don't get it. I'm super new to this and only made a pot still. Okay, uh, Nishi, so the site loss is purely there for you to be able to see what goes on within uh, your column. So if you're using reflux or if you are. Um, uh, using bot botanicals or something like that. It's purely an aesthetic thing, um, as far as I can tell. It's just so I can see what's going on if I'm using reflux, uh, to see how fast the reflux happening and how much reflux is happening. It's not a must-have, 
most of the pot stalls and stuff uh, will give you awesome flavor so yeah you can get high abv just as long as you um how can i put it as long as you run it multiple times or run it nice and slow even had guys use a pot still with a wet blanket over the top of the wet uh, of the cap of the pot still to increase reflux on the top of the the pot upping your flavor or not your flavor your abv so yeah uh no good evening no thank you very much uh for me jamie still a single run uh trevor that's a good question so it all depends on how you want to run your still the reason why i do a single run and not a strip run and then a spirit run is i only do small batches at a time my still has a max limit of 40 liters but then it's the brim so it's technically a 35 liter boiler and i do 20 liter washes so uh, there's no need for me to do a stripping run and then a spirit run. I once have done a, or did do a stripping run when I made 100 liters of one product that I ran through the still. So yeah, um, majority of the time, I do not need to do a strip, just a pure uh, spirit run using reflux to ensure that I clean up my cuts. So yeah. Okay, you can see this. okay, cool. Okay, so like I said um, on the channel a really long time ago, we did the Does ABB Actually Matter experiment, and I've meant to check back on it, and I thought maybe during the live stream would be a good idea. Now, what I have here, what we did is we did a test with the same amount of wood with a standard sugar wash started with a 0% ABV, meaning just pure water. We did a 20% ABV. We also did a 40%. We did a 60% ABV, as well as a 80%. Now, the reason behind this experiment or this, uh, how can I put it, uh, test was to see what kind of flavors we pull out of the wood. Now, if you've ever done uh, aging on wood and you've done research on what kind of flavors you can expect, you will see even Jesse spoke about it over on his channel about 55% about is that tipping point where you go from sweet wood candies to a more astringent tannic wood flavors out of the wood so what we did is we took that and we tested to see if we can pull a max out of it and yeah different abvs when we did the test the first time there was a bunch of different flavors happening um in all of that and even on the straight water side, remember water is also a solvent, so it also pulled some quite interesting flavors, some sweet wood flavors out of the wood. So yeah, we're going to do a quick test to see if any of those flavors have changed. But before we into that, I just want to double check the still um, had it run this morning and forgot it to put the reflux on. I had a nice jet of stream coming out of the spout, so yeah, your eye on your still at all times. Stillworks and Brewing, welcome brother. Um, anybody on here not subscribed to Stillworks and Brewing's channel, please head over to his channel. He makes awesome videos and uh, yeah, some cool recipes over there. So head over to his channel and have a look there. Cool. Let me quickly check on the still.
So this is a straight wood in water. It was a medium toast oak stave with no charring whatsoever. Um, and every single one of these had the same amount of liquid in it, the same amount of spirit, and the exact same weight of wood. So on the... Were you able to taste the sorghum in the King Kom whiskey and did it differ that much from barley? Trevor, yes. Um, sorghum tends to give a... I wouldn't say sweeter, but a more of a candy sweetness to your whiskey than barley does. Um, that also depends if you are using straight barley or if you are using malted barley. Malted barley has a lot sweeter flavor than um, you have with your standard um, unmalted barley. So yeah, it depends on what kind of barley you use. Uh, and brandy gene thank you very much for the comment um yes the jam brandy did come out nice i actually had a friend over last night and we had a couple of brandy and cokes using the jam brandy it's coming out quite nicely at the moment and uh the career wood we used that medium toast career wood is adding a beautiful sweet flavor to it um the other one. Have you tried aging on birch? No, I have not yet tried aging on birch wood. Um, here in South Africa, we're quite limited to what kind of woods and stuff we get unless you go and buy it from a speciality wood merchant. And me being in a small town in the northwest province of South Africa, um, yeah, we get pine and maranti, so that's about it. Okay, so question there, what's your opinion on toasted oak chips uh, to oak staves? Okay, so chips is a very dangerous thing to use in my opinion. Not that there's anything wrong with chips, it's just the surface area you have um, access to with your spirit tends to get people to overage their spirits really quickly. So uh, if you want to get a ton of wood flavor really quickly into your product, yes, use oak chips, but um, oak chips tend to, like I say, become astringent really quickly, and that just ruins the product. I've had many guys phone me and mail me saying that their stuff tastes like just wood licking a piece of wood, and... Um, 99% of the time it is when they use chips. So staves, if you look at a stave, and you look at the wood as it is, you have cross grain. So you do not have a lot of access to the wood flavor. So like on the inside of a barrel. But if you look on the ends, you have open ends. Now these open ends are like little straws that allow the the spirit or whatever you're aging to pull into the wood and kind of mix through it and that pulls out a lot more flavor uh, than using just oak um, uh, bigger pieces of oak stay so uh, oak block will also increase the flavor quite quickly and give you a more controlled product so what I will be doing in the future when aging products is I will be chopping my wood blocks into smaller or my wood staves into smaller blocks, allowing more of this end grain accessed by the wood, allowing me to extract flavor quicker. And uh, yeah, good question. Thank you very much. Uh, next one, when you aging flavoring wood, what ratio of wood to spirit do you use? I aged some rum at 50%, about 1.5 liters with some oak for three days and it came out very woody. Okay, Neil, um, how much wood did you use, number one? My ratio for wood, I did a complete video on this. If you take the surface area of a barrel, um, depending on what size barrel, they vary quite substantially going between like a 5 litre barrel and a 500 litre barrel. It's anything from about 
think it was 10 square centimeters per liter. So I tend to lean to about 10 to 15 square centimeters per liter. Um, so if you take this stave that I have here, this is over oaking by adding too much wood. But if you take this, which is our rum, we only have two oak staves in this year. And this is about one and a half liters of rum in this jar. With our Millipop Moonshine, we have three staves in here, but it's at different levels of char, adding different levels of flavor. So roughly about 10 to 15 square centimeters, only measured on the surface and not accounting for the end grain that you are using. So 10 to 15 square centimeters. So yeah, hope that answers your question. Um, what's your opinion on toasted oaks? Okay, we've done that run. How important is age of the oak you're using? Justin, age is very important. They call it seasoning. So, uh, most of the wood or I think all the wood, to be honest, uh, used in barrels as well as the guys that are supplying it through the distiller stores have what's referred to as seasoned wood. So that wood has been standing outside in the wind and the rain, uh, allowing it to concentrate flavor and just add a ton more, a ton more flavor into the wood. If you just buy straightforward uh, new wood, meaning wood that hasn't been seasoned, standing outside for a long time, um, yeah, it will not have the same flavor profile or complexity that a seasoned piece of wood has. So I um, had a discussion with someone, I don't know if it was you, um, about this. If you have friends or someone that cut down a tree in a, a like fruit tree a couple of years ago or something and the wood's just standing on a pile, grab some of those pieces, take the sap wood off, meaning the light wood on the outside and only use the core. So your... Um, hardwood on the inside that you can use to age with. The sap would tend to go too astringent quick. Where with oak, the majority of the wood are, is sap wood and not a big piece of uh, hardwood. So yeah, just finished my rum now. Thank you very much for the comment, brother. Um, but would you go about making marula pins? Uh, use wild yeast. Steve, um, I actually have about six kilograms of marulas coming my way to do a marula recipe. So when I use marulas to make a mampur, what I do is I peel, uh, break the skin open, uh, take both the, the cap and the bottom off, only have that exposed pip, throw the exposed pips and the skins into a bucket with some lukewarm water, not hot, not boiling, just lukewarm water. Uh, take a mixer, like a paint mixer or a my mixer that I use to mix up my uh, products and just run it for about five minutes, knocking everything around, get as much of that flavor off as possible. Then what I do is add my uh, water in, take my gravity, and then add sugar up until I get to a gravity of a 1090, giving me about 12% ABV once it's finished fermenting out, leaving the skins and the pips inside of the wash. Um, as soon as it's fermented out, what I do then is scoop off the top, but remember, with any fruit wash, remember to punch the cap every day, do not allow that cap to start settling at the top. The moment that cap settles, what happens is it creates like an airlock between the wash and the fruit pulp. That then uh, is a nice hot, humid environment and causes infection inside of that fruit cap. So remember to punch the cap down into the liquid to get that alcohol out the fruit pulp. Um, if you just leave it to ferment, you might run into the risk of getting an infection. And then for wild yeast, very good question. I actually have an experiment that I did the run earlier on today, two runs, one with distillers yeast, one with wild yeast. And I have some quite interesting results from that. So yes, you can use wild yeast, 
But Wild Yeast is a bit of a uh, wild card. You might end up with something that will only be able to give you 3% ABV. You're wasting a lot of sugar. So, yeah. That's my opinion on it. So, that's why I'm saying use lukewarm water and not hot water so you don't kill off the yeast. So, anything below about 40 degrees C should be basis. I'm going to quickly check the soil. Hey bud, would you go about making marula? Okay, we've answered that question. Now, quickly feedback. Um, tasted um, straight wood on the oak. It has a very woody, almost like... Um, sounds almost like Vic, so... Um, almost minty flavor to it. Smell to it. But it's very sweet on the taste. Uh, now for the 20%. So you can immediately see the difference in color between a 80% and a 20% ABV. Now these jars have been standing in exactly the same position, same place, and uh, same temperature. Is it essential to invert sugars if you do a sugar wash? Essential, no. Um, will it give you a better fermentation? Yes. Will it change the flavor of the end product? That is debatable, depending on what kind of nutrients and what kind of uh, additives you use in the wash. The flavor might change, but um, yeah, Jesse did a video on it where he tested invert versus the other one. And uh, yeah, it does give a slightly flavor, but essential. No, does it give a better result? Absolutely, 100%. That little bit of extra 20 minutes added, actually 40 minutes to get the water to a boil and then a rolling boil for 20 minutes. Um, yes, it does add a ton more flavor, not flavor, but a faster ferment. Sorry, not flavor, but a faster ferment. I'm stuck on this stuff in front of me now. So, yeah. Quickly taste the 20%. Okay, so this is the 20% on the nose. It's sweet. Has some um, almost black currant kind of smell to it. Tasting very woody, very sweet. Almost like a biscuit kind of sweetness. And um, yeah. Um, I now tend to age some of my spirit on 20% after doing this experiment. Cut my higher ABV down before I bottle. When I bottle, I bottle at about 45%. Um, and yeah, but I age on 55%. Either that line between and flavor, sweet flavor. Now over to the 40% and on the 40% immediately you have a different flavor profile coming on up on the nose. Sorry for looking over my shoulder the whole time. I'm just making sure that I keep an eye on the sight glass. I'll move you guys closer to the sight glass the moment we have the first drips coming up. Any other questions, guys, please feel free to uh, pop it down in the comments. Um, I'll answer the questions as they come up. Just waiting for the still to get up to temp before we get to the next part. So on the 40%, you immediately get that sweet wood flavors, but it is very woody and starting to push into the wood astringency, but still a very sweet and delicate flavor. 
remember, this is pure sugar wash, so it's like aging a vodka. Um, so, yeah. If you want to know more about this experiment and you just joined in, check the video on ABV Does It Actually Matter? Yeah, if you just joined, we're just trying to kill some time up until we have still ready to start doing that um, impression of the heads and tails. Now we're moving into the 60% ABV. Drastic different color. And on the nose, a really different flavor. Or smell. So this is a lot more astringent. There is a ton more flavor coming off the wood and not as sweet as the previous ones. Greg, what temperature does the wash need to be before you add the bananas and how long does it need to rest? So the bananas I added in nice and hot. So the wash was about at 55%, allowing me to kill off any foreign yeast or bacteria or anything on the bananas itself um, and then I just let it cool down for about 45 minutes to an hour allowing it to become below 40 degrees added hot and cold water to the to the wash um, mixed it all together and then you saw me distribute it in the two uh, buckets uh, allowing ton of headroom mm, the reason for all the headroom is I've had Plenty of paintings on my ceiling, my walls from banana. I've had lids explode off fermenters. I've had airlocks turning into sprinklers. Um, so yeah, allow a ton of headroom when you use it. But the temperature for the banana when I added it into the bucket was about at 50, uh, 50 degrees centigrade. Uh, as such viewers will experience. YouTube is not receiving. Okay, I don't know. Please let me know if the video quality or anything changes. Um, I'm getting a constant update here from YouTube telling me that there is a a error in the video. So just let me know. On the 60%, it's a lot more astringent. There is almost no sweetness. It's almost just just wood flavor coming through. So almost like wood varnish type of taste. So yeah. Any other questions, guys? So we can get some answers coming through to you guys. Uh, thanks for all your hard work on the channel. It's a great place to learn. I dropped a comment in the last bit. When are you going to make Oh, Neil. Uh, tequila. I've been phoning around trying to get um, some agave. Apparently, there is a agave farm down in the Northern Cape. So, planning a trip on that uh, down to the Northern Cape sometime soon to go pick up some actual agave, some blue agave to do a tequila because doing a tequila with agave syrup uh, it's not the real McCoy. So yeah, I want to go pick up some actual real agave or if I can there's a guy down in the Northern Cape that is making tequila in South Africa using actual blue agave See if I can get some mash from him, some uh, pre-smoked, pre-pulped agave plant to do a tequila. Yeah. Are you running a two-inch column? So how long does a typical spirit run take for 20 liters? Steve, I'm running a uh, 42 millimeter column, so it's just slightly below two inches. And the average run from start to finish takes four hours. That includes boiler take time to heat up the wash. So four hours uh, from start to finish. Uh, thank you, Nishi, for letting me know. If you get yeast from your wash into your spill, does it create off flavors? Trevor, 
Yes and no, depending on how much yeast you add to your um, to your boiler and how low your element is setting. So if you've ever drained your boiler after you've done your boil off or your spirit run, you will see a lot of sediment forming. So if you're using an external heating source like gas, all that yeast will sit at the bottom and that might cause scorching. You use an element in your still, the yeast tends to sit below the element and you don't get as much of a hassle with it. But um, leave your wash for about two extra days to get everything to settle out. Uh, that will just give you a ton more um, control over your flavors. So yeah, give it a bit good time to settle out and try not to get that sediment in your boiler. Uh, looking good right now. Cool. What do you use to heat your mash? In your, what's your opinion on PID? Sean, good question. PIDs, I find nothing wrong with PIDs. Um, I've used a PID once or twice in my life before on previous stills that I owned. And uh, yeah, um, it takes the fun out of it. So for me to set it and forget it, not the kind of way I do it. I like to play around with my takeoff speed and my input power to get the kind of takeoff that I want with regards to flavor and ABV. By playing around with your takeoff speed, you can determine what kind of ABV you'll be getting. Cool. So, uh, yeah. Uh, nothing wrong with the PID. If you use it, good on you. Um, it's just not for me. Uh, question next, Clive. I have saved all my four shots and heads for a year. Same wash. Can I proof it down to 40% and do a run? Clive, no. Unfortunately, if you do not separate your um, four shots from your heads, meaning you take off that little bit and separate it to remove as much of the methanol as possible, you will have way too much methanol in that. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Use it for fire lighters, use it for um, window cleaner, whatever. But no, you can't run it. Way too much concentrated methanol in there. So, yeah, don't risk it, brother. Um, is it cheaper to distill or buy from the store? Sia, good question. Is it cheaper? Absolutely not. Um, set up costs on a still and ingredients and time taken and electricity and all the other stuff, no. It's like any other hobby, it's something that you do for the fun of it. Um, do you save money in the long run? Well, that depends on what kind of product you want to make. Keeping in mind that you start a wash today, you're not going to have something drinkable by the end of the week. Um, you want to age it like a whiskey or a brandy. That will take some time so you have to figure time into the equation so no it won't save you money it will give you a ton of enjoyment at the end of the day to make your own product from start to finish to conceptualize the idea and the recipe and keeping in mind that every single still will produce a different flavor depending on what kind of still you use um in your regarding scorching, if running a still with elements, would putting botanicals in a muslin bag in your boiler reduce the risk of scorching? Fred, absolutely yes. Um, my father-in-law, when he does his run, he uses a metal basket that he hangs in his pot still just below the, uh, uh, or just above the elements keeping everything nice and away from the element. So yes, using a element with a muslin bag, just make sure it doesn't touch the element in your muslin bag. Burns or scorches, yeah, will give good kind of flavors. My father-in-law uses it for his runs and uh, he has a straightforward old 1970 pot. So yeah. Favorite in flavor thus far, I have to say my favorite product that I've made on the channel this far was the Unkumbuti whiskey that we made a very long time ago on the channel. I really have to do that again. Adding that little bit of molasses in it gave it a nice sweet flavor. So second will be the banana rum that we recently did. Uh, I was quite surprised with the banana and the rum flavors coming off of the still. So yeah, well, I was very impressed with that.
So, yeah. Uh, Going to move you guys closer to the stall. We have temperature or we have reflux starting to happen. So, yeah, let's move you close to the stall. Closer to the top, yeah. Yeah, call it this. And done. Cool. Here we go. Kind of. Here we go. Okay. Come here right here quickly. Okay. Right there. We are now in full reflux. We've turned down one element um, to about half of its power. We have full reflux running, so the tap at the back here is open in full. And we have full reflux, reflux happening, happening allowing, allowing us now, now to compress our heads and our tails. And if you look at the bottom here, absolutely, absolutely nothing, nothing coming off. Coming off. Okay. okay. So for that now what we're going to do is we're going to keep it running like this for about 20 minutes allowing our column to become completely balanced once our column is completely balanced what we're going to do then is we are going to dial back on the reflux at the back here allowing us to start taking off the spirit cool uh is a winner on my third batch awesome great stuff um see how many stalls do i have currently i only have this one still my other still was stolen uh from yeah uh, out of my yard so yeah currently only have one still Okay. So as soon as we have enough reflux happening, we have reflux now still running quite nicely coming off. You're asking what that in the top there is. That is a stainless steel sieve that I normally put botanicals into. Uh, allowing, allowing me to uh, the, uh, do some infusion some when I do a lemon brandy, brandy or something like that. Like that. Cool. No, we're going to no, keep it like that. that. We, we have a have couple, a couple of, of coils of ration rings in, in there and some, some cut copper tubing. tubing. What do we push down? down. Oh, uh, in there. Cool. Um, your column is balanced. Any signs? So, balancing your column. That will take time. What I generally do to balance the column, to make sure my column is balanced, is test with my hand running up the column to feel if there is a temperature change between the top of the column and the bottom of the column. If everything feels um, 
the same temperature. I know my column is balanced and everything inside of the column, if I pack my column, is at the right temperature. Cool. Let's quickly get some drips coming off of the still. Um, what we're going to do now is just dial back on some of the reflux. Okay, there we go. So now that we have dialed back on the reflux, we have our first drips coming off of the stool. Hope everybody can see it. I have this writing down. There we go. That's first drips coming off of the stool. This is about our takeoff speed that we are going to be running at. So let's just see if I can get, get a picture of that. It's about a pencil lead thickness on this column. We're going to be keeping still running at. I did not do the full compression of the heads and tails like I normally do. Show you guys how I do the run. Yeah. That's first drips, a nice thin stream. The smell coming off of that now. Nice and sweet. A lot of methanol flavor. Go back to the table. There we go. Hey. Cool. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Solo. Welcome to the chat. Um, yeah, if you have any questions, please pop them down. Ask Jesse or George for some of this. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, yeah, I'll send Jesse an email, see if he'll send it. <laughs> Bring me one of these stills quite far away from Australia. Um, yeah, due to the hobby, what is proof and what is ABV? Sorry to the experienced peeps. Um, see ya. The difference between proof and ABV, uh, in the olden days, the guys got paid in rum. So uh, what they did to prove that the rum was of good quality and a high alcohol content, they poured it onto black powder and then they set the black powder alight. Um, if the black powder burned, that was proof that the ABV of the rum is nice and high. Um, and yeah, they received it as payment for working on the docks and the ship and that other fun stuff. Um, so yeah, 50% ABV was the benchmark that they used and that's why it's called 100 proof because it was 100% proof that the alcohol, uh, the rum actually contained alcohol. And then yeah, we just changed it into um, ABV depending on uh, the alcohol by volume, the percentage of alcohol mixed into the solution. And that is what ABV is. So if it says 50% ABV, that means 50% of the mixture is um, alcohol, 50% is other congeners. So uh, whether it's water or uh, cream or whatever used to capture it with. So yeah, that's the difference. Um, I like the trap on your condenser output. Uh, <laughs> thanks, Greg. Um, yeah. Uh, once said, uh, small town, make plans to use whatever is there to your disposal. So you can't just pop down to a distiller shop and buy whatever you need. Um, haha, ask for the still. Yes. <laughs> I, I doubt that he'll miss it. Fred, uh, that guy has many. So yeah, we're uh, planning on getting a new still for the channel pretty soon and also building a small still for some uh, gin recipe. Um, so if anybody has a couple ideas on how to, uh, or a small like 5 or 10 litre still where I can get one or somebody can help me put one together for gin recipes so we can do a couple of tests on gin uh, because I'm planning on doing a deconstructed gin recipes. So uh, taking only the, the botanicals in the gin 
and doing a run with only juniper, only coriander, only cardamom, only angelic seeds, uh, angelic root, um, and seeing what kind of flavors and then blending them back together uh, to ensure that we have, to see what kind of flavors we can get out of each of those. So to help my gin knowledge, I don't have a lot of it yet. I haven't done many gins. Uh, I've done about five gins in my total in my life. So yeah. Um, so if anybody has any ideas where we can get a still for the channel to do uh, gin recipes, small five to 10 liter still, please pop it down or send me an email. My email address should be floating on one of the things or go to the community page. The email address will be there. Uh, do you use copper mesh in your column? Neil, no, I do not use copper mesh. Um, what I use, let me just grab it quickly. So what I use is these pieces of wire. Now this is normal cord wire from a uh, extension cord or a uh, solid copper wire um, electrical cord. Take it out. It does have a plastic coating on it. So what I did is I burned it off in a fire, decoiled it, burned it off, and then I boiled it for a good couple of hours uh, to get any residue off. Then I did that 551 solution. And I used these little rings inside of my column. It does bump up ABV about 10%. Uh, running it straight pot still, um, it does bump up the ABV quite a lot. Uh, reason for not using uh, copper mesh once again is difficult to come by and uh, me being a hardware rep, it's easy for me to just pop into a store and get all the off-cut wire used. So yeah. How are you planning that gin macerate or gin basket? Fred, good question. Both of them, I will be doing maceration as well as infusion. So yeah, this small little still that I'll be using will have to be able to do both of those. So uh, yeah, still thinking of ideas. Uh, maybe do a 22 millimeter column coming up and then uh, have a small uh, gin basket that I can just attach together with no side glass or anything, just something that I can add some botanicals into. I've got a couple of those small little stainless steel sieves left over that I can add into that. So, yeah, looking at something like that. Ish, what happened if load shedding kicks in while you're doing a run? Brother, today um, we had load shedding here from 3 o'clock up until just before 6. That's why the live stream only went up at 6 o'clock. I was planning on doing it a bit earlier, but unfortunately, yeah, load shedding. So I plan my runs between load shedding to uh, get the most out of my runs. So majority of my runs happen late in the evening or early in the mornings um, and then on weekend. So normally, yeah. Louis Griffiths, hi from the UK. Hi there, Griff, uh, Louis, or Louis. Hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly. Um, in South Africa, we will call you Louis. So, uh, yeah, welcome. Any questions, please pop it down in the comments. We've got another about 20 minutes left before, yeah, we end the live stream. So, please pop the comments down below if you have any comments uh, or questions. And quickly change the jar before it overflows and then check the ABV. We can see that. So this is uh, four shots and heads that I've taken off of the Millipub Moonshine. Now we didn't do the full compression run just for the sake of time. Uh, da, 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 da. Here we go. Get that into our graduated cylinder. Yes, the graduated cylinder is plastic. I try and limit the exposure time as much as possible. It is food grade laboratorium or laboratory grade plastic. So, uh, yeah. So, this one is now running at 
Okay, there they are. It's just, just floating off the top. So it's running at 90% ABV. So my four shots in my head are taken off here at... Ooh, let me just see. You can see that there. Here we go, 90%. So for the Mulipap Moonshine, we have 90% now. And uh, yeah, what I'm going to do now is turn off the reflux completely, dial back on the power and dial in my speed that I want to take it off at. So yeah, let's get into that. Okay, so I turned down the power on the last element I have running inside of my still uh, to about a quarter of the power going into the still now. And uh, yeah, with that now, we have still have that nice pencil stream of uh, liquid coming off and uh, yeah, should be coming off at about between 70 to 80 percent at that current speed that we're taking it off. I want to dial it into uh, about 65% once I hit jar number two. So, yeah, let's just get these four shots and heads from underneath my nose. The methanol smell is quite potent. That's 250 mils of four shots and heads. Market. Here we go. Four shots and heads at 90. From Millipop Moonshine. So now we're just going to run this still. Keep it at that takeoff speed and keep adjusting it. So we get to our takeoff of about 65%. Uh, questions. Source of 2 inch copper, tubing and ferrule. Mark Mankies. Um, best place to get copper tubing will be on one of the distillers groups on Facebook, uh, guys do tend to sell whatever they have additional. For ferals, I would suggest guys like Prohibition Brewers, um, Distillic here in South Africa. Um, you can import them yourself, uh, but it takes a very long time. Number one, I see there's a comment there to get a Chinese still from eBay. Um, yeah, getting a Chinese still, the import cost on that is quite high here in South Africa. So, yeah, um, maybe look at it. Time frame to get one does take a bit of time to get it in South Africa. If you have any context, let me know. Maybe we can do something like that. I'm from Mayorstown, Pennsylvania. I think it's Pennsylvania, USA. I want to try the banana rum recipe you made next uh, run. Yeah, brother. Definitely try it. Three, rock, uh, three S hobbies. Definitely try the banana rum. I was pleasantly surprised about the flavor and the taste that I got out of it. Must say it is my favorite rum by far. Um, the banana did push back on that anise licorice flavors and allowed some great funky flavors. So it's more like a Jamaican rum than your standard uh, store-bought rum. So... Yeah, very good uh, rum, actually right here on the table. Um, it has a piece of aniseed still in it, and it's developing some flavors. Ah, hello, Brave, my name is Vic. You're still, you should build yourself a swamp cooler for your still cooling. Circulate the water with a fish pump. Vic, I actually have a Jojo tank. Um, or an echo tank, but it's a little water storage tank, and I'm using a uh, like a swimming pool, small swimming pool pump, one of those fold-up swimming pools uh, to recirculate the water. I can do about maximum three runs on it before the water gets too hot and I don't get any reflux out of it, so uh, or any cooling out of it. So this is the third run for the day. 
We're sprint, running it pretty hot, but because we're running the Muli Pop Moonshine and it's more of a generational run, yeah, we can get away with it. Um, but thanks for the idea. Swamp Cooler, I'll definitely check on that. Hi, Ken. Welcome, Ontario, Canada. Here, Ken, we chat on email quite a lot, so thanks, brother. Uh, finally, quite a 55 litre keg to build my own site. Lots of other plates. Do you have any suggestions where I can get glass, cheap to cut glass? Ken, to be honest with you, um, if I have to redo my site glass, I'll just go out and buy one. So, um, you're in South Africa now since the hobby started taking off, uh, thanks to our uh, non sale of alcohol in South Africa for a good part of our lockdown. I started import, importing it and I can pick one up for about a quarter of the price that I've paid to make this one. So, yeah. Otherwise, uh, glass suppliers, anybody that does laboratorium equipment, I think I'm mispronouncing that word properly. But yeah, any of those guys will be able to cut and uh, edge the glass for you. Just make sure it's a temperature uh, glass that can handle hot and cold. The glass I'm currently using for my still is a uh, like a tea infusion uh, thermos type of deal. So yeah, works quite well. Uh, there are companies that run separate gin infusions for their gins, which may be interesting. Yes, definitely, Fred. Uh, um, I will be doing a test on maturation and infusion and then combining the two together to see if we can get those two different flavors out. Um, somebody commented up there. Can you use aluminium pot for a boiler? Absolutely, 100% you can use aluminium. That is a very touchy subject. Um, depending on where you're from, but yes, you can use a aluminium boiler. The ABV inside of your pot is not high enough to oxidize, and uh, the the pH of your liquid is not low enough to oxidize the aluminium to a point where it will actually leach into it. Just make sure the aluminium you use is for cooking so uh, there's a bunch of different aluminiums out there so don't just go pick up any aluminium tank like an old uh, milk aluminium can or something like that those uh, tend to leach a little bit of lead into it um so yeah make sure it's food grade aluminium like your heart and that type of stuff right uh what type of liquor can't you make yeah, there's nothing you can't make. Um, you can make literally anything you can get your hands on with regards to ingredients. So rum, whiskey, gin, um, brandy, depends on what kind of ingredients you can get your hands on. You can get uh, and make it. At the end of the day, you are only limited by the ingredients as well as time. Can you make something as good as a store-bought bottle of whiskey? Maybe, maybe not. It all depends on how much time you want to wait and if you can get your hands on the right ingredient. So, uh, like coming up on the channel to celebrate one year on the channel. We've got a big bag of this coming up. So, this is Scottish peat malted barley. Now, this is going to make a super whiskey to celebrate one year on the channel. So, uh, yeah, can't wait for this one. The smells coming off of this bag already is amazing. So, if you guys have any suggestions on what kind of recipe or should I just go straight peat with this, please pop them down in the comments or send me an email for a nice recipe for this. So, uh, yeah, this is a scotch peated whiskey that we're going to be making on the channel. So, to answer your questions here, you can make anything your heart desires. Uh, I made my gin basket from a two inch side glass and some two inch keys and da, 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 about $25 from AliExpress. Fred, awesome brother, uh, check my email, someone just sent me uh, the links to that. Um, there's a lot of fly by night suppliers on, the, on that there. And uh, yeah, distracted. Okay. Let's just test jar number two. Mm. 
Here we go. So John number two came off at about 75, uh, 74%. Let me just get it into camera angle. There we go. I hope everybody can see it. And we go. At about 75%. So now we are dialed in for the rest of our run to take our hearts. Cool. Here we go. Okay. Make it like a Lafoy. Definitely will try a Lafoy. I tried a strawberry run. Close the recipe you have four banana rum and strawberries might make sure frozen drinks around the pool in the summer. Awesome. Three. I will definitely try a strawberry type of rum as well. Um, I mean, with that challenge we did with Bearded, he made a pineapple rum, and I'm pretty interested in trying that as well. So what do you guys think about a banana rum? Okay, guys, we've got about four minutes left on the live stream before, um, yeah, we have to shut off. So if you guys have any ideas or any questions that you want to ask before we end off with this, uh, yeah. So for the rest of the run, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start keep collecting up until I start smelling tails. The moment I smell the tails, I'm going to use my compression technique. So yeah, four minutes left, guys. Any questions, please pop them down so we can get on set. Um, and then yeah, looking forward to the next live stream, the new video with the distillers yeast versus the um wild yeast that we took from grapes will be up next week tuesday so look out for that one and as always if you haven't hit that subscribe button yet do so okay sean marriott thank you very much oh, don't forget to like the video guys if you have uh, if you have time any shops around Joburg that you can help a beginner Yes, brother, in and around Joburg, there is tons of shops. Um, uh, I would head to guys like Kettle Crawl. They do tend to um, have stills in stock and also not too bad on the pricing. The Stalik as well. Um, yeah, they do quite good stills and there's quite a lot of good quality products out there for them. But yeah, build your own if you really want to. It's quite easy to do. Like I said, on the distiller groups, head over there and just grab some information from guys, get stills, uh, pipes, that type of stuff. There's a lot of guys that are making quite good products. So yeah, I am happy to see you or back on the air today. Using reflux to compress my run for 20 minutes just to work perfect. Once you understand the running, yep, absolutely, Mark. Uh, like any other hobby, it just takes a bit of practice. The moment you get it down to a T, it is pretty easy to do and then you just start playing around with the different flavors so yeah um it's just practice at the end of the day and like jesse said on his last video he thinks he's a lot better distiller now than he was in the beginning so uh, every run you do you do get better and better so yeah have you ever tried have you ever had a still blow up on you and question have you ever tried anything with raisin? I am running uh, three. Yes, I did a raisin brandy, uh, raisin and grape brandy on the channel. One of the first Branavain videos I did came out. I aged on three different types of wood. And have I ever had a still blow up on me? No, brother, I have not. I do not do uh, thumpers or thump jars or glass jars. So I always make sure my system is open as far as possible so no restrictions or anything that can block the path of the vapors um yeah so it tends to not to blow up your cell if you have no restrictions in your run so uh, yeah never had a still blow up on me touch wood unhappy 
Okay. Cool, guys. Um, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, check out the video coming up next week. If you haven't hit the subscribe button yet, please hit the subscribe button down below. I'm going to finish this run at the back there. Quickly change the joys. Cool. Here we go. Jaw number two. Test it. There we go, settled in nicely at 70%. So yeah, let's take the heart off at 70% and just keep the run going. Thank you guys very much for joining me.